the gun and get you. There you go. <laughs> Everything continues to look good. We're still loading liquid oxygen on the second stage. Now currently the range is green, the air and sea space, as well as the area around Complex 40, they're clear for launch. And on a weather front, uh, as we talked a few minutes ago, uh, the good news is we're getting ready to begin what we call uh, blowing down or purging the liquid oxygen propellants out of the strong back that we're going up to the second stage. And then we'll be venting down pressure in yeah, the strong back. Started. And you can see there's a stream of white vapor coming off of the strong back. That's normal. That's just the uh, excess pressure in the ground side being vented out. And it's meeting that warm, humid Florida air. And you get that white condensation. Next event coming in 10 seconds is going to be startup. We'll also begin pressurizing the first and second stages for launch. Falcon is in startup. We've gone to startup. Flight computers on both stages are now running the Falcon 9 countdown. Next event, launch directors go. LD, go for launch. You heard it. Launch director is given the go. Everything continues to look good. T minus 36 seconds and counting. All systems are go for the launch of Falcon 9 with Turksat 5B. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. Pitching down range. 
Stage one chamber pressure is nominal. plus 40 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying All the right, TurkSat 5B satellite to geosynchronous transfer orbit. We've throttled down in preparation for maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Good views from the SpaceX ground cameras following the first day. Falcon is supersonic. We've gone supersonic. The Merlin engines are back up to full power. Max Q. And we're through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Everything continues to look good. Trajectory is nominal. Avionics report systems are nominal. One hundred seconds into flight coming up in just under a minute. We're going to have main engine cutoff where we shut off the nine Merlin 1D engines, we'll separate the stages, and then the second stage engine will ignite at about the two minute and 44 second mark. MVAC is chilling in. The MVAC D engine chill in call out. We've begun putting a little bit of liquid oxygen through the turbo pump to get it cold in preparation for second stage ignition. That's coming up in just about 34 seconds from now. First stage is coming up on 4G's acceleration and we're gonna begin throttling down to hold 4G's. Getting ready for main engine cutoff. First stage engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. We've got successful stage separation. The second stage now under power of the single Merlin vacuum engine will be coming up on fairing deploy in a little under 30 seconds. Views of the titanium grid fins beginning to deploy on the left as we see the lights of Florida in the background as we head east, due east from the Cape into our transfer orbit parking orbit. We're getting ready for the camera on second stage to switch forward to look at the spacecraft and the payload fairing for fairing deploy. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you see the two fairing halves have separated, falling away from the vehicle. We're now exposing the Turksat 5B satellite to outer space. As a reminder, we will be attempting to retrieve these two fairing halves with the help of our recovery vessel, Bob. Now, as mentioned previously, these two fairing halves supported the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 5 mission in June of this year. But right now, we're at T plus four minutes and counting. We had a successful launch from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral, and we're currently watching the second stage on the right-hand side of your screen enter orbit with the left-hand left side of your screen. The first stage is heading back to our drone ship in the Atlantic, a shortfall of gravitas. Let's watch out for that landing, that entry burn begin in just a moment. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry startup. Really bright from that entry burn start. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And there it looks like we've had a successful entry burn shutdown. Um, if you noticed on the launch pad, the, the Falcon 9, um, is not when all. the Falcon 9 makes its way back to Earth, you may notice some different soot markings on the outer side, or the outer 
edges of the rocket. If you ever wondered how those soot markings are formed, it's because the soot is generated when the carbon-based rocket-grade kerosene RP-1 burns. Since re-entry occurs engines first, the booster flies through its own plume, which deposits the soot on the rocket, and you can see some of those sparks and soot flying up at the camera there on the left-hand side. Terminal guidance. Again, as a quick recap, we had a successful liftoff at 10.58 p.m. from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. A successful separation of the first and second stages. Uh, the first stage, stage is on its way gravitas. back to our drone ship, a, a, uh, a shortfall of gravitas in the Atlantic stage Ocean. Stage two, FTS is saved. And the second stage is heading to its initial orbital insertion with the TurkSat 5B satellite. We're coming up on a couple events, Seco 1 and Landing Burn. And back engine cutoff. Stage one landing burn. Got a successful second engine cutoff and nominal orbit. The insertion. landing burn has just started. And we just heard good orbit. Confirmed a nominal orbital insertion. We're now Stage waiting on our Falcon to deploy. land on drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you have it. That's SpaceX's 99th successful booster landing, as well as SpaceX's 78th mission flying a reflown booster. Our mission isn't over just yet. The second stage is now embarking on its coast phase. Aziz milletim, değerli misafirler, sizlere en kalbi duygularımla, sevgiyle, saygıyla selamlıyorum. Bugün Türkiye ve Türk milleti adına bir gurur anına daha şahit olmanın heyecanını yaşıyoruz. Biliyorsunuz Ocak'ta TürkSat 5A'yı Falcon 9 roketi ile fırlatmış, Haziran ayında da hizmete alma törenini gerçekleştirmiştik. Bugün de ülkemizin en güçlü ve en yüksek kapasiteli haberleşme uydusu olan TürkSat 5B'yi uzaya fırlattık. Bu uydu projemizde de Yine SpaceX firmasının Falcon 9 roketini tercih ettik. Sayın Musk'ı ve SpaceX firmasını Türkiye karşıtı lobilerin şantajına ve baskısına boyun eğmedikleri için şahsım milletim adına tebrik ediyorum. TürkSat 5B uydumuz 42 derece doğu yörüngesinde hizmet veren ve televizyon yayıncılığının yükünü taşıyan TürkSat 3A ve TürkSat 4A uydularına yedeklik yapacaktır. Ayrıca TürkSat 5B'nin devreye girmesiyle veri iletim hızı ve kapasitesi 15 kattan fazla artacaktır. Bu sayede internet erişiminin kısıtlı olduğu bölgelere kara, deniz, ve hava taşıtları da dahil olmak üzere kapsama alanındaki kullanıcılara geniş bant uydu internet hizmeti verilebilecektir. Uydumuz 35 yıldan fazla manevra ömrüyle 42 derece doğu yörüngesindeki frekans ve yörünge kullanım haklarının korunmasını sağlayacaktır. İletişim kapasitemizi daha da güçlendirecek TürkSat 5B uydumuzun ülkemiz için, milletimiz için hayırlara vesile olmasını diliyorum. SpaceX firmasıyla uzay çalışmaları alanında yürüttüğümüz başarılı ortak çalışmalarımızın artarak devam etmesini temenni ediyorum. Bizlere bu gururu yaşatan herkese şahsım, ülkem ve milletim adına şükranlarımı sunuyorum.